وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد وإن شرح هذا الكتاب نزهة النظر في توضيح نخبة الفكر للإمام الحافظ ابن حجر العسقلاني رحمه الله The author says ثمطعن the criticism of a narrator إما أن يكون لكذب الراوي It could be for the reason because the narrator جزاك الله خيرا إما أن يكون it could be possible because لكذب الراوي the narrator lied أو تهمته بذلك or he suspected of lying We're now going to go into the second reason why a hadith can be weak We've spoken about the السقط من السند the first reason why hadith can be weak because of a disconnection that ta- that takes place in the hadith we're now going to go into the second reason why a hadith can be weak which is that they can be a criticism placed on the narrator the narrator has been criticized and inshallah ta'ala as we're going to see the criticism five of it is connected to خمسة منها تتعلق بالعدالة Five is connected to his what? Integrity وخمسة تتعلق بالضبط And five is connected to his precision and his memory So Hafid is going to mention them insha'Allah ta'ala First of all going to start with the uh, types uh, that are uh, Well, he doesn't do it in order, so we will just speak about it in the first of the ten. So five and five all together ten. The first of the ten is إما أن يكون لكذب الراوي the narrator lied. He's lying. What does it mean كذب الراوي? It means half of mentions in his nusha في الحديث النبوي بأن يروي عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم ما لم يقوله متعمدا لذلك. Is that He claims to have narrated from the Prophet ﷺ a hadith or he attributes a hadith to the Prophet ﷺ that which the Prophet did not say muta'amidan, deliberately. Deliberately. The reason why the Hafid wants to get and uh, why he wants to say deliberately is because he's soon going to speak about the sahi and the, the ghalid, the one who is doing it by mistake, slip of a tongue. That's different. The lying here is one that's deliberate. He's choosing to do it. He knows the Prophet didn't say this. And he's lying about the Prophet That's the first one. Or he's suspected of it. Or he is what? Be suspected of it. How can we suspect of a person lying? It means, as Hafid says, This hadith has not been found except from him. No one else mentioned this from the Prophet except him. And it is what? And it opposes the well-known principles. It's in opposition to the qawaid of the sharia. It's in opposition to the principles of the sharia. Also, the person who is suspected of lying is the one who lies in his day-to-day conversations. In his normal dialogue, he lies. So in his conversation, he lies, he says, he says things that are not true. This person, even that he's not been caught lying about the Prophet, he's what? Mutaham. Is suspected of it. 
So what did he mention, Hafid ibn Nusrat al-Nadar? That first of all, he narrates a hadith. This hadith has not been found from anyone else mentioning it except who? Him. And it is also what? وَيَكُونُ مُخَالِفًا لِلْقَوَاعِدِ الْمَعْلُومَةِ It's opposing the principles that are well known in the Sharia. Ah. The Sharia ah came, what are the principles of the Sharia? Ah? تَحْصِيلُ الْمَصَالِحِ the Sharia ah came to what? Bring about Masalih. And it also came to do Dar'ul Mafasid. So Jalbul Masalih and Dar'ul Mafasid. Bring about good and to repel evil. This is what the Sharia ah came to do. It also came to do. If it can't remove the evil, if it can't remove the evil, it came to do what? Taqlilul Mafasid. To lessen it. If you can't fully get rid of it, it reduces it to the smallest that it can make it into. These are qawa'id al-shari'ah now. These are principles of the sharia. Ah. So if we find and we come across, if we come across a hadith that goes against those principles, we'll say that is what? Even that though we're not 100% sure. But we say this hadith is what? Mutahamu bil kadib. Also, a person who's normally known to just lie in his conversation. When he talks and he discusses matters, he's known to lie. Even though this hasn't happened to him regarding the Prophet. He hasn't, said this, he hasn't lied about the Prophet. So this one is lower. What is it? It's below the first one. Then the Sheikh says, أو فحش غلطه What does the word فحش غلط mean? It means a كثرته His mistakes are too much. This individual, he does too much mistakes. Too much mistakes. فحش غلطه His mistakes and his errors are excessive. فحش غلطه أو غفلته Or he's heedless. He has a, he's a person who's not mutqin. He's a person who's not mutqin. He's not grounded. He's a person who is heedless. He's heedless. He's absent-minded. Oh, fisqihi. Fisqihi means what? He's a fasiq. He's a what? He's a fasiq. The fisq, the fasiq, the fisq that he comes with can either be by action can be by speech. It's any immoral thing that he does. It, any sins that he does, ma lam yablugh, as long as it doesn't reach what? Ma lam yablugh al-kufra, as long as it doesn't reach, as long as it doesn't reach kufr. It's not, it's not reaching that level of kufr. It's below kufr. It is what? Ma lam yablugh al-kufra, as long as it doesn't reach what? As long as it doesn't reach that level of kufr. So he's doing major sins. He's doing what? Major sins. Now somebody might ask and say, but isn't lying fisk? Isn't lying fisk? What we say is, as Hafiz mentioned here, he says, وَبَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْأَوَّلِ عُبُومٌ Lying is fisk. But it's an entity that has deserved for it to be placed alone. So, why? Why did we choose to take it out of fisq and make it stand by itself? As we're going to see the ulama al hadith, if a person's fasiq and he repents, is this if a person's fasiq, he does fisq, like he drinks khamar, and he does other things. Is his, is his ahadith accepted based on his repentance? Yes. Like in the one who lies, if he repents, his repentance might be a lie. So they don't accept his repentance. He is forgiven to Allah. That's between him and Allah. That's his relation between him and Allah. As for would his hadith ever be taken? Never. The person who lies about the Prophet Sallallahu whether he repents or not is never taken. Whether he repents or not, it's never taken. Why is it not taken? 
because you can't reassure us that his repentance here is not a lie. Okay, and this is a matter of religion. So to be on the safe side, they dismiss him. So that's why lying was taken out of fisk. Does that make sense? Because the other remaining th acts of fisk, repentance can bring it back, and you can be t your narrations will be taken. As for lying, on the other hand, it's not. وَإِنَّمَا أُفْرِدَ الْأَوَّلُ لِكَوْنِ الْقَدْحِ بِهِ أَشَدَّ فِي هَذَا الْفَنِّ Good. أَوْ وَهْمِهِ وَهْمِهِ is a person who does a mistake. The word وَهْم slip, slip, slip of the tongue a mistake that occurs. A mistake that occurs. We're going to go more into this. بِأَنْ يَرْوِي عَلَى سَبِيلِ التَّوَهُمِ the person, he narrates this hadith on the basis of thinking that this is how it is. He thinks it's this way. And the word tawahum comes from the root word wahima. Comes from the root word wahima, wahman, which is a tawahum. Ay ghalita is when the person does a mistake. We're going to see the difference between that and the rest, inshaAllah ta'ala, soon. Aw mukhalafatihi, he opposes. He comes with opposition. Who does he oppose? The reliable ones or does he oppose the weak ones? La mukhalafatu li thiqat. He opposes those scholars who are thiqa, who are reliable, whose ahadith are accepted. So because of that, his hadith is rejected, this individual. He's opposing the reliable ones. He's opposing those who are grounded in this science and who are strong in their memory. Aw jahalatihi. Or this individual is not known. We have no criticism on him, nor do we have any praises on him. He's an unknown person. There's no specific praise, nor is there a specific what? Criticism. If a person has no criticism, nor does he have any praise, he's majhul. His majhul is unknown. Something has to be said about him for him to be known. If he gets criticized, then he's known. If he gets praised, he's known. But if he doesn't have neither of the two, he's not praised nor is he criticized, then this person is what? He's majhul. And as we're going to see in more details, the jahala are types. They are types. We'll see them inshaAllah ta'ala. Or the third person is a what? He's an innovator. He's a what? He's an innovator. This is also another criticism. What is innovation? It is, in simple terms, somebody who introduces a matter into the religion, they bring it into the religion, or somebody else brings it into the religion and they are believing that this will bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no previous there's no there's no evidence for it or there is no previous individuals such as the sahabas and others who he follows in it's a very loose definition of it or his memorization is bad what does it mean, Hisu Hivdihi? How, how can you determine if somebody's memory is bad? What he gets right and what he gets wrong? What he gets wrong is more than what he gets right. He does more mistakes than he does correct. If his mistakes are more than his, what he gets right, his mistakes are more, then we, say, we call this person Su Hivd, he has bad memory. But if a person gets it more right than he gets it wrong, then no. ولذلك عبد الرحمن يحيى المعلم اليماني يزا الفوائد المجموعة الفوائد المجموعة from the page 11 to page 20 he goes and speaks about this matter in very good details this particular issue رحمه الله تعالى حافظنا رحمه الله what does he do? Hafid ibn Hajar, what does he do? 
he goes into each one. What is it called? When the scholar, so we, we finished the 10. We finished the what? We finished the 10. The 10 reason in why a narrator will be criticized. Five of them are what? Five of them are what? Due to his what? Adala, which is his integrity. And five has something to do with his what? His dabt, which is his precision. Now if we go back together, let's all try to do it together. إِمَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ لِكَدْبِ الرَّاوِي What does that one fall under? That the narrator is a liar. Where does that go? Is it adala or is it adabd? It's the adala of the narrator. One. What about the أَوْتُغْمَتِي بِذَلِكَ Or he's suspected of lying. He's adala. أَوْ فُحْشُ غَلَطِهِ He does many mistakes. This is adabd. So we have... How many do we have adala? Two. How many do we have adabd? One. Good. أو غفلته هيدلس ضب أو فسقه عدالة أو وهمه ضبط أو مخالفته ضبط أو جهالته عدالة أو بدعته عدالة أو سوء حفظه ضبط. So you have those ten. Five on this side and five on that side. This five is his integrity, his honor, his integrity. And this other five on this hand was what? His memory. So if any time you ever hear that a narrator has been criticized, the scholars are weakening the hadith because of a person in the chain, they are only criticizing based on one of those ten. Uh, one of those ten. Either the adala of the narrator and five come under that, or the precision and the memory of the narrator and five come under that. Are we all together? Now half of the hadith, what he's going to do is, he's going to go back to each one. And he's going to tell you what is it called. So when the narrator lies about the Prophet, okay, and he's being criticized for that, then what's that hadith called? What's the name of that hadith now? What name do the scholars give that hadith? The name that they give that hadith is called Mawdu'. So he goes back, he says, Fal-awwalu, the first one. Which one? When the narrator lies. So, Fal-awwalu, the first of the ten. The first one of the, the ten, which is that when he lies, is called mawdu. It's called what? Mawdu. When the scholars, they say this hadith is, a liar is in it. I mean, this hadith is mawdu. Are they saying it from the angle of certainty? Or are they basing it on al ghalib High speculation. Which of those two are they basing it on? Yeah? Why? What makes you say that? Why would you say high speculation? It's true. قَدْ يَسْتُقُ الْكَذُوبِ That the liar can sometimes tell the truth. He could be telling the truth. إِذْ قَدْ يَسْتُقُ الْكَذُوبِ That it can sometimes happen that the liar that we've known to lie, huh? Because one time you can, choose to, you can choose to tell the truth in this particular situation. But the Ahlul Ilmi, the people of knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them what? Half of the look what he says. He says, he says like, li Ahlul Ilmi, bil hadithi malakatan qawiyyatan yumayyizuna biha thalik. That the scholars, the people of knowledge of hadith, they have a malaka qawiyya. What does malaka actually mean? What does actually malaka mean? Malaka means when something becomes like nature for you. Because it becomes part of you. It can't be separated from you. Can't be what? Can't be separated from you. So Ahlul Ilm, the scholars of Hadith, they have what is known as malaka qawiyya. They have malaka strength. Uh, and that ability and that quwa in identifying this issue and being able to distinguish whether this person is telling the truth in this particular situation even though he's a liar they can tell they can tell look what he says after that and the reason why this can come from them the scholars of hadith this is, the reason why they can stand up to do this is because 
من يكون اطلاعه تاما they are a people and anyone it doesn't just matter it doesn't just mean them but anyone who has these characteristics is able to do that as well who has what is known as اطلاع تام he's a person who really reads observes analyzes scrutinizes and this type of observation of this individual and this person's reading is tam it's complete it's like one hour or two hours it's umruhu his whole life is like this wadihinuhu thaqiban and his brain and his mind is profound is solid his clear mind wa fahmuhu qawiyan and allah has given him great understanding wa ma'rifatuhu bil qara'in dalati ala dhalika mutamakkina and he's also a person who has so much ability and strength in identifying the external factors that can play a role in knowing what's taking place here. And don't worry, Ibn Hajr will tell you in the Nuzhatul Nadar what are these external qara'in that you can identify to know if a narrator is lying. He's going to tell us soon. So how can the scholars identify when a person is lying? One of the most easiest ones is when he, he himself admits that he's lying. وَقَدْ يُعْرَفُ الْوَضْعُ بِإِقْرَارِ وَضْعِهِ The one who placed the hadith, the one who made up the hadith, he himself might come and say, oh, I lied. Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, he says in his kitab al-Iqtiraah, فِي بَيَانِ الْإِصْطِلَاحِ Ibn Daqiq al-Eid said that. In his book, what he said is that, does anyone know where this book comes from, al-Iqtiraah فِي بَيَانِ الْإِصْطِلَاحِ Does you know any book that has any relationship with it? Uh, which one? Which one? What's the muqidah got to do with al-iqtirah? The muqidah of Dahabi is a summary of Ibn al-Daqiq al-Aidi's kitab. Al-iqtirah fi bayan al-istilah is actually written by who Ibn al-Daqiq al-Aidi and al-Imam al-Dahabi in his kitab al-muqidah he summarized the kitab of Ibn al-Daqiq al-Aidi. He summarized it. And when we were beginning this series of Nukhbat al-Fikr we spoke about these books, right? We spoke about the relationship of these books and the manhajiyya and the methodology the scholars have written in these books. So Ibn al-Daqiq al-Eid said something. He said, لَكِنْ لَا يُقْطَعُ بِذَلِكَ Achieve, right? That the person would admit that he lied. صح? He lies, he admits it. Ibn al-Daqiq al-Eid said, even then, it's not a hundred percent that when he admits it, that he lied, because he could also be lying in his admitting. He could be lying and be a liar in the admitting that he came with. Are we together, brothers? Billahi alaykum, let's have a waqfa here. Let's stand over this point for a bit. Imagine a people whose manhaj, their religion, is to lie. Their deen is taqiyya. It's a nice way of saying what? Lie. Taqiyya means what? Is what we Ahlul Sunnah call nifaq, hypocrisy, in simple terms. It is to show opposite to what you believe. With no duress or no, what you call it, subjugation. You willingly choose to lie. And you say opposite to what you believe. This is their what? This is what the Rafidah and the Shia, they believe. And it's sad because they believe the way that the shaitan has duped them. They believe if a person doesn't come with taqiyya, he's a what? He's a kafir. So if you don't lie, you're a kafir. They say that the taqiyya is their religion. And the one who doesn't come with taqiyya, he has no deen. That's what they believe. The taqiyya is our deen. If you don't come with taqiyya, you're not a believer. So if you don't lie about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa if you don't lie about the deen, you're a disbeliever. Sahih? What do Ahlul Sunnah believe? مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Anyone who lies about me deliberately and chooses to lie, then let him prepare his place in the hellfire. That's what we believe, right? وَلِذَلِكَ The person who came out with the idea of a taqiyya, the one who came with this idea, 
the shaitan that came with this idea the whole purpose and reason why he came at, came out with the idea of a taqiyah was to never get caught because if you catch a person and he tells you oh that was only taqiyah it was hadmuddin is to destroy the religion from inside it is what it is to destroy the religion from what from within the today cannot promise you whatever quote that they bring or a statement that they bring that the imam that they are attributing it to didn't say this from the angle of taqiyah they can't reassure you that if you came to them and said to them what is the most authentic book to you all they'll say to you the kitab al-kafi written by al-kulayni that's the most authentic book kulayni is the bukhari of the shia and his Kitab al-Kafi is the Bukhari of the Shia. If somebody said from the angle of a jadal, an argumentation and a debate, said to them, this book of yours, al-Kafi, what about if all of it is taqiyya? That isn't the truth. Can you prove otherwise? There's no way out of it. Not to mention that the author of the most authentic book for them his seerah is majhul, where he learned from, where he took knowledge from. And it is a kitab that you can count how many times he caught, they referenced the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The overwhelming majority of them is from other people. It's the biggest book for the Rafidah and the Shia. Not to mention whilst you're reading these people's works, the Rafidah, and you read their stuff when they say the Prophet Sallallahu name Wallahi it's little that you find them say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as you're reading you hardly come across them saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Walidharika from the Zanadiqa one of the, one of the heretics who came out to lie about the Prophet Sallallahu made up a hadith was a man by the name of Abdul Ibn, Ibn Abi Al-Awjan he lied about the Prophet Sallallahu he made up so many hadith so he got caught Harun al-Rashid grabbed him he put him on a death sentence when he grabbed him and he put him on a death sentence he said you can kill me do whatever you want to me doesn't matter I've left behind so many hadith which I make halal that which is haram and I make haram that which is halal I have no problem. So he said to him, Die. For verily, a'imma live for this. Great scholars are living for this. The hadith that you just played around with and that you made up. Don't worry, there's men that live for this. Like who? Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi. And others of that caliber who are going to come and they're going to sit down over those ahadiths and they're going to pick it one after the other they're what? they're going to pick one hadith after the other ولذلك عبد الرحمن بن مهدي used to say رحمه الله he used to say أيها الناس he'll go out in the open and he'll say to the people أيها الناس oh people don't worry Whilst I am alive, no one will lie about the Prophet ﷺ. Say to people, don't worry. As long as I live, and I'm between you guys, no one has the audacity to lie about the Prophet ﷺ. So these are the Jahabidah. Jahabidah al-Nuqat. They are the A'imma who sat down, put so much effort in, working on these ahadiths <coughs> so Ibn Daqiq al-Eid says لكن لا يقطع بذلك it's not 100% when he says that he when he admits that he lied about the Prophet it's not definite as well لاحتمال أن يكون كذب في ذلك الإقراري because he could have lied in that he could have lied in that admitting okay? he could have been lying when he was admitting it like in Ibn Hajar then does a powerful point here. He says that some people understood from the statement of Ibn Daqiq al-Eid that it means that if he admits that he lies, 
he could probably be lying so we can take his narration. Ibn Taqajar says that's not what he meant. And that's not the intent of Ibn Taqiq al-Eid. Ibn Taqiq is only talking about, you can't say 100% since he admitted it, it's a lie upon the Prophet, so we know that. We won't implement it, for sure. But we also I can't say 100% that he lied about the Prophet in this situation. Does that make sense? He could be lying in his admitting. أَنَّهُ لَا يُعْمَلُ بِذَلِكَ الْإِقْرَارِ أَصْلًا وَذَيْسَ ذَلِكَ مُرَادَهُ وَإِنَّمَا نَفِي الْقَطْعِ بِذَلِكَ وَلَا يَلْزَمُ مِنْ نَفِي الْقَطْعِ نَفِي الْحُكْمِ Two things they're conflating. See, two things they're bringing together, but they're not meant to lead together. Which is, we cannot clearly mention that what he said about in his confession here is 100%. We can't say that. We don't know. He could be lying in his confession. But we can 100% avoid his ahadith. Okay, so there's a difference between the nafi al qat'i and nafi al hukmi. What are the qara'in? What are the external factors that we can actually personally know that there's a, this hadith was placed and it's a lie? He goes, ما يؤخذ من حال الراوي We take it from the situation of the narrator. كما وقع لمأمور بن أحمد كما وقع لما كما وقع لمأمور بن أحمد Like it's taken place for مأمور بن أحمد As it took place for him. Okay, what happened? أنه ذكر بحضرته الخلاف في كون الحسن سمع من أبي هريرة أو لا مأمور بن أحمد in his gathering, it was mentioned, a khilaf was brought, a dispute occurred. Did Hassan al-Basri hear from Abu Huraira or did he not? It was a khilaf. This is in the gathering of who? Ma'mun ibn, Ma'mun ibn Ahmed. Did Hassan al-Basri hear from Abu Huraira or did he not? This zindiq, this kadab, what did he do? He looked at the situation. He said, what can I possibly do to show these people that he did hear from Hassan Abu Huraira? So he said, a chain from himself to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Prophet said, Sami al Hassan min Abu Huraira. That Hassan al Basri you heard from Abu Huraira. A'udhu Billah. The Prophet is before both of them. Huh? The Prophet of Allah is before Hassan al-Basri and Abu Huraira, before both of them. So if the Prophet saw Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira is Sahabi, why would we want to know if he heard from Abu Huraira? So they can see from that situation. That's one example. That is one example. That story is mentioned by an Imam al-Dhahabi on his Mizan al-I'tidal and Ibn Hajar brings in his kitab, Lisan al Mizan. Majruheen is also mentioned. Ibn Hibban, Al Mawdu'at by Ibn al Jawzi, and others. And this man, Ma'mun ibn Ahmed, he's from the Mashahir al Kadarin, he's from the well known liars. Ibn Asakir said about him in the kitab, Tariqu al Dimashqa, he said, Yes, to min Allah, this man deserves from Allah. Wal Rasul and the Messenger. وَمِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ From the believers اللَّعْنَةَ تَكَاسِ That's what he deserves. Another example is غِيَاثِ ibn Ibrahim غِيَاثِ ibn Ibrahim حَيْثُ دَخَلْ عَلَى الْمَهْدِيُّ He entered upon Mahdi. He entered onto Al-Mahdiyu, the leader. فوجده يلعب بالحباب he saw him playing with a pigeon فساق في الحال إسنادا إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم as soon as he saw the leader with a pigeon he straight away brought a chain for it and he said لا سبق إلا في نصل أو خف أو حافر أو جلاح that it's not permissible to take money in any competition except the following and within those he mentioned Pigeon. And that was a part of the hadith. 
So he added it on to what? He added that onto it just so he can please the leader. So Mahdiyu, the leader, he recognized Anu Kadab Ali Ajlihi that he lied for his sake. He realized that this individual, Ghiyat ibn Ibrahim, who was a liar, made this narration, forged it, fabricated it for his sake. So what did he do for Amar Abidab al Hamami? He said, well, let's kill the bird. Let's kill this pigeon. The question here is, was the pigeon the one deserving to be killed or him? What did the pigeon do? The pigeon shouldn't have been killed. That's what Ali, Muli Ali Qari rahimahullah, mentions. Mulla Ali Qari. That's what he mentions. That it was deserving that the liar gets killed, not the pigeon. The pigeon hasn't done anything. One of the external factors in which the situation of the narrator can be known is that it is opposing a textual Quranic verse or it's opposing a sunnah mutawatira sorry the, the, the before it was pertaining to the situation of the narrator right now it's pertaining to external factors to identify the narration not the narrator but the narration okay it is that this particular narration is opposing a textual quranic verse it goes against it And inshallah ta'ala, there are many ahadith like that, such as the Qissatul Gharaniq, which we're not going to speak about now. Like in what, it, what does it go against? Tunaqidu asas al It goes against the foundation of our religion. And it goes against the what? Qawa'idu deen, the principles of the, the principles of, principle of the religion. I'm going to leave this, I'm leaving this Qissatul Gharaniq, I'm leaving it for the seerah insha'Allah ta'ala. I'm going to leave it for the what? The seerah insha'Allah ta'ala. We're going to be speaking about it bi-idhnillah al-kareem. That story. Like Sheikh Nahasir rahimahullah, he wrote a book called, he called a book called Nasbul Majaniq fi Qissatil Gharaniq. Sheikh Nahasir wrote a book on it, weakening it. And showing that it's what? that it's weak and it's not a correct story which is that the Prophet ﷺ spoke statements of kufr that story is weak it goes against the foundation of the religion also the way to identify that this hadith is fabricated is that it goes against a clear cut consent it goes against against ijma' which is qat'i ijma' which is sarih the ijma'at are types. Ijma' which is what? Sukuti. But here is ijma' which is qat'i, click ijma'. Or it goes or it goes against a sarih al aqli. What does it go against this hadith? It goes against direct logic. Okay? Now here are brothers is that this thing that this hadith is going against is a matter la yakhtalifu fihi thlan. Two individuals don't oppose each other on this. Logically, everyone here kind of, if you see a hadith, okay, that mentions something that goes against common sense, that's what it goes against, then this hadith is what? It's from the sign, ways to identify this hadith is weak. But this issue has to be a matter which is what? لا يختلف فيه إثنان. Two individuals don't oppose each other. لكن to make the عقل to make your rational mind the أساس the foundation and based on your logic you reject the hadith and you accept the hadith then this is not what is meant by it. And this is a مسألة that requires more discussion لكن if a person wants to look into this more in details and examples and a more lengthy discussion then they should definitely go to the kitab which is known as Dar'u Ta'arud Al-Aqli Wa Naql written by Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah or known as Muafaqatu Sahih Al-Ma'aquli 
موافقة صحيح المنقول بصريح المعقول أما لصريح المعقول والشيخ شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمة speaks about reconciling between what reconciling between the authentic textual evidence with the sound rational mind Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah tries to say is that he goes against the Qanun Kulli written by, written by mentioned by Fakhruddin al-Razi and that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says a hadith which is sahih a hadith which is thabit on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a hadith that has authentically been transmitted from the Prophet she will not oppose a rational mind, a clear, sound, rational mind. And if we do find it happen that way, okay, that, you're, that they oppose each other, it's one of two reasons. Either the textual evidence here, this hadith is not authentic, Aslan, and then the Prophet did not say it, alayhi salatu wasalam, or the hadith is thabit, it's correctly transmitted from the Prophet والسلام, But this person's aql is deficient. This person's mind and their, ration, their cap capability of comprehending this is weak. And as you can see today, things that were immoral at a particular time has now become moral. Become fine, no problem with it. And so when you tell them this is wrong, this is immoral, you seem to be the one who is what? You seem to be the one who is crazy and a lunatic. So those people, we don't say that the text here is bad. We say you have lost what? The aql that is needed. Sometimes the way that it can be known is when it opposes the the textual evidence, the hadith opposes the aql. If there's a way to reconcile between the two, then of course we won't say that. There's a way to bring them together. That's what Ibn Hajr says. <laughs> that he doesn't accept any interpretation or explanation. Ibn Hajr mentions something very, very powerful here as well, which is that the one who's narrating, sometimes he's the one who makes up the narrations. He's the one who fabricates it. He's the one who forges it. And sometimes he takes it from the speech of somebody else. He takes it back from like somebody who's before him. Or he takes it from the speech of one of the wise people who says, or the Israeliyat, and etc. And so when he takes it from the Israeliyat, or when he takes it from the statements of the wise ones, he makes a chain for it and he attributes it to the Prophet. Because he won't sell if he just says that this is a statement of a wise man. No one would want to hear that. People would take it more serious if the Prophet said it, right? So it comes across a very wise statement. And so what he does is that he makes it a hadith of the Prophet. Or he comes across a Israeli, which is a pre-Islamic. He takes it from the Bible, or he takes it from the what? He takes it from the Bible, or he takes it from the Torah, wherever it may be, and then he attributes it to the Prophet Or he takes the statement of some of the A'imah to Salaf, and what they said, the statement is so good, so he says that the Prophet said this alayhi salatu wasalam. فَيُرَكِّبْ لَهُ إِسْنَادًا صَحِيحًا لِيُرَوِّجَ So he can take it to the market and he can sell this new quote to the people. What is it that makes people actually lie about the Prophet? Why? What's the motive? What's the purpose behind it? Ibn Hajar says, إِمَّا عَدَمُ الدِّينَ Some of them is because they had no religion. They were zanadiqa, they were heretics. So they would lie about the Prophet. Second one is, أَوْ غَلَبَةُ الْجَهْلِ this person is excessively ignorant. He has no knowledge. He's half the bullay. He's a what? He's a half the bullay. In this field of hadith, he has no knowledge. He's an ignorant individual. 
So he has no knowledge. Kaba'd al muta'abidina, like some of the worshippers. Like some of the like some of the worshippers. Some of them, another reason may be Aw Fart al Asabiya. This person has fanatism in him. He's a fanatic individual. He's a he's a blind follower of a madhab. So he has to find a hadith for the madhab. So he makes up a hadith for it. Or hawa. Or the person follows whims and desires. He is he works under a leader. So somehow he wants to get some recognition from the leader or some. So what does he do? He makes up hadiths and he lies. Or This person wants to come out with something that no one else has ever said. He wants to be famous. He wants people to say, SubhanAllah, this hadith, no one else narrated except for that. So he likes this idea of al ighrab He likes to be strange and wow and this hasn't been said. ishtihar. The reason why he does that is so he can be what? So he can be famous and well known. Hafid then says, It's haram. All of those reasons, they're all haram. And it's a consent of those whose consent is taken into consideration. Except a group known as the Karramiyyah, who are the followers of Muhammad ibn Karram. They're the followers of Muhammad ibn Karram. And they have many aqidah problems. They have tiqad problems. From the problems that they have in belief is that they believe that the Iman is iqrar wa tasdiq bil lisan. It is that its utterance and affirmation, a belief on the tongue only. Nothing has to really be brought from the heart. If the person say Iman, it's just utterance. It's to vocalize it. It's to believe it on your tongue. That's it. Nothing has to be really in your heart. That's their belief regarding Iman. So because of that, what have they claimed? That the munafiqeen at the time of the Prophet are believers. If the Iman is only utterance on your tongue, then the munafiqeen at the time of the Prophet were saying the, the statements of Iman on their mouth. So for them, the munafiqeen are believers. And that's what I, is mentioned in, it mentioned in the Qutub of Firaq. The books that talk about groups and their beliefs. ولذلك يعني إمام الذهبي يسيز إن يصير على من بلاء بعض these people خذيل حتى التقط من المذاهب أرداها. These people, they've truly been humiliated by Allah سبحانه وتعالى until they've chosen the worst of madhabs in terms of their عقيدة system. ومن الأحاديث أوهاها. And from the ahadiths, they picked at the weakest, most despicable. Opinion, which is that lying about the Prophet is what? It's permissible. To lie for the Prophet is permissible, they said. You're allowed to lie, make a hadith for the Prophet to support him. So their belief in hadith is the worst and the most, and also what? Their belief in aqeed is also the worst. So Imam Mudhabi is saying bad aqeedah and bad choice of view in aqeedah and bad choice in terms of hadith has come together for these people. وَبَعْضَ الْمُتَصَوِّفَةِ And some of the Sufiya نُقِلَ عَنْهُمْ It was transmitted from them. إِبَاحَةُ الْوَضْعِ فِي التَّرْهِيبِ وَالتَّرْهِيبِ That is permissible. To lie about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم In what? Like in. فِي التَّرْهِيبِ وَالتَّرْهِيبِ when it comes to a hadith pertaining to placing hope and fear in the hearts of the people. وَهُوَ خَطَأٌ مِّنْ فَاعِلِهِ Ibn Hajar says, this is a mistake on the one who's saying this. نَشَعَ عَنْ This has only come out due to ignorance of them. 
because fear and hope min jumlat al ahkam al shar'iyah it falls under the jurisprudent rulings of the religion why would you make a ruling up for the for the prophet sallallahu the prophet doesn't need anyone to lie for him ahl al sunnah wal jama'ah what is it that they agreed upon wa ittafaqu ala anna at ta'amud bil kadhib ahl al sunnah wal jama'ah ahl al sunnah wal jama'ah what is it that they unanimously agreed upon that the lying that lying on the prophet and deliberately is min al kaba'ir is from the major sins ahl al sunnah that's the ittifaq and this is the ijma' can we now say that it's a ijma' that lying on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is haram yes do we look at the view and the statement of the karamiya Hafid already told you. He says, وَكُلُّ ذَلِكَ حَرَامٌ بِإِجْمَاعِ مَنْ يُعْتَدُّ بِهِ The Karamiya and deviated groups are not from those مِنْ مَنْ يُعْتَدُّ بِهِ They are not a people whose view we hold on to. It has no value. لكن أهل السنة والجماعة What is it that they agreed upon? That it's haram. But saying that it's haram, they believe it's what? It's a major sin to lie about the honor of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Lakin Abu Muhammad al Jwainiyu, does anyone know who Abu Muhammad al Jwaini is? Huh? What, what book did he write? Abu Muhammad al Jwaini. Abu Ma'ali al Jwaini's father. This is the father of Abu Ma'ali al Jwaini. Abu, Muh Abu Muhammad al Jwaini, the father of Abu Ma'ali al Jwaini, the author of Warqat. He went far and we said anyone who lies about the Prophet is a kafir. فَكَفَّرَ مَنْ تَعَمَّدَ الْكَذِبَ عَلَى النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. He went overboard. Also, Dahabi, rahimahullah, if you look at his kitab, Al-Kabair, look what he wrote. He said, Al-Kadiba عَلَى النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم كُفْرٌ يَنْقُلُ عَلَى الْمِلَّةِ Lying about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is kufr. The person leaves the fold of Al-Islam. وَلَا رَيْبَ and there's no doubt that الكذب, deliberately lying upon the Prophet وسلم, lying upon Allah Azza wa Jalla in making halal haram and making haram halal kufrun mahbun it's clear cut kufr but the, but the lying other than making halal haram and haram halal is this is, is, is not kufr this is the view of imam dhahabi and if a person deliberately lies about allah and his messenger in making halal that which haram and haram that which he made halal then this person is a kafir okay that's what he said wa innama sha'nu fi al kadhib alayhi fi siwa dhalik what about other than that if a person lies about the prophet for example, he makes up a hadith and he attributes it falsely, trying to mention a fadailul a'mal, righteous deeds, for something that's already been established. He makes a hadith up for it. He's not making halal or haram. Salatul duha, he makes a hadith up for the virtue of Salatul duha. This is where it's not kufr akbar, based on dhahabi. What's this one? It's major sin. So what did he do? He brings the ijma'ah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and the call of Abu Muhammad al Jwaini and he reconciles between it. Hafid, on the other hand, he is with the opinion of the Jumu'ah. Sorry, the Ijma' of the Ahl Sunnah, which is that it is Kabiratu bin al Kabair. It's a major sin. Also, he mentions another Ijma'ah. He says, وَاتَّفَقُوا عَلَى تَحْرِيمِ الرِّوَايَةِ الْمَوْضُوعِ That it's also agreed by the ulama that it's prohibited to narrate a fabricated narration illa maqroonan bi bayani except that the person clarifies he explains that this is a fabricated narration he can't just say qala rasulullah and leave it like that he has to say a weak fabricated narration says about the prophet why? Because the Prophet said, Man haddatha anni, anyone who narrates on my behalf or says about me, 
بحديث أي حديث يرى أنه كذب that it seems to be a lie about me or he knows it to be a lie about me فهو أحد الكاذبين فهو أحد الكاذبين that is from one of the two liars and Imam Muslim narrated in his, in his Sahih so if you know and you're clear in this hadith being fabricated, made up from the Prophet Sallallahu you're not allowed to attribute it to him you have to explain it and tell the people that it's a fabricated narration this is an ittifaq that تحريم الرواية الموضوع إلا مقرونا ببيانه based on that particular hadith من حدث عني بحديث يرى أنه كذب فهو أحد الكاذبين رواه مسلم We'll conclude there inshaAllah ta'ala Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan And Allah and his messenger are free from it Subhanakallahumma bihamdik Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Astaghfiruka wa tuhmilayhi